Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Red Eagle Politics. Make sure you guys like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. So, Donald Trump today once again raking in another $15 million in a fundraiser in the great state of Georgia, a very key state for the 2024 presidential election. And he had a really good day today for numerous reasons that we're going to talk about, but still, this notion that Donald Trump's campaign is broke or they don't have money is technically not true. He is catching up, and they know it. He is raising money left and right. Even Ron DeSantis' former primary opponent today came out and said he is going to help Trump raise money. They're going to get a lot of those donors from the primary back on board, which, again, they wasted a lot of money, sadly, on that primary, but it is better late than never that they come home to Donald Trump and he went to the state of Georgia. And this is huge because you look at Georgia, this is a state that Republicans initially thought that they may never get back. But Donald Trump leads the polls by 3.8%. And it looks like RFK Jr. is on the ballot and Trump's lead increases with RFK Jr. on the ballot in the five-way race. He goes up to a six-point lead in the state of Georgia, which is absolutely huge. He's polling in the two-way at 49.4. If he gets that margin just on the nose, he likely takes the state of Georgia, which is huge. You talk about black turnout potentially dipping due to disillusionment with Biden. This is a piece of the puzzle he needs because if he gets Georgia, he's not going to lose North Carolina, and he puts himself at 251 electoral votes. Then he needs one of those paths we talk about to win. He could do it with just Pennsylvania, Michigan and Wisconsin, where he's up in both states, Michigan and Arizona, where he's up in both, Michigan and Nevada, where he's up in both, or Arizona and Wisconsin, where he's up in both. He has a wide open math with plenty of paths to victory. If he's able to get the state of Georgia, that's why it's crucial. And Donald Trump going there, doing these more you know intimate events he met with law enforcement. He met with supporters outside of the tarmac. And also, more notably, he went into the Chick-fil-A. And then you got all these pictures, all these epic moments. He walked into the Chick-fil-A. Everybody was enthusiastic and excited to see him. This guy just basically walked in. Usually, you know, Trump in the past has talked about how sometimes you don't want to show up at the fast food restaurants because you never know who's going to be making the food. They could be anti-Trump, then, you know, whatever. A lot of potentially bad things could do it, especially in this precinct, because this precinct right here that Chick-fil-A was in is a precinct that is 91% black and gave Biden a 92.3% vote share over Donald Trump in the 2020 election, but still, he was met with resounding praise. Everybody was there. They were taking pictures with them. He was talking politics. It's not like they were just being cordial and nice. You know, he was talking politics, and we know how the Democrats operate in this modern day and age. It's not like you have a lot of people who hate Trump or will never vote for Trump that are still cordial with Trump. You see a lot of protesters. Now it's different. Now people are warming up to Trump. Is he going to win all of those voters? Well, you need to get people out and voting. A lot of these voters in this precinct that like Trump are definitely low propensity voters. But if they do turn out to vote for Trump against Biden, that could be huge. I don't think Trump's going to win like 25% of the black vote, but if he got like 15% in Georgia and turnout dips a little bit due to dissatisfaction with the Biden administration, that is absolutely huge. And the map definitely opens up in Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, because Biden's margins in Philadelphia and Pittsburgh and Detroit and Milwaukee are likely not going to be where he needs them to be in order to go out there and win re-election. That's why this is kind of crucial. Every vote counts. Trump warmly received at Chick-fil-A. Overall, a great sign. He had a very good day. Yes, it's anecdotal. We know that. But still, this is a recurring theme. I just could not picture Donald Trump going into a precinct that's 91% black at a Chick-fil-A and being well-received by the customers back in 2019 even, uh, let alone going back to 2016. So already you're seeing the image of Trump change. Trump hatred fatigue is a real thing. A lot of people potentially warming up to Donald Trump instead of the inverse. And you can obviously see why um, when you look at the numbers. Because now we find out that inflation 
is actually getting far worse. It's not like it's declining, and you're not even seeing deflation. Deflation is something that we're not seeing, and you would have liked to see that because prices under this administration have gone up by 25% or even more than that in some instances, depending on what the prices are for. But still, you're not even seeing inflation dip. Inflation is going up. Wages are not rising above inflation fast enough. Gas prices are extremely out of control. You know, Biden was talking about we're going to get below 3% inflation. Now inflation is 3.5%. That is not a good sign for Biden. It's not. And you look at the major issues that Americans care about. The economy is one of them. Biden is trying to cling to jobs numbers, which are extremely misleading that don't tell the full picture. Last month, we lost full-time jobs. We're not gaining manufacturing the way Biden claims. He'll talk about, oh, we batted 15 million jobs, and then most of those are from COVID. The rest are part-time jobs that are going to illegal aliens, and that has to be the Trump pitch Even in a place like Georgia, there's a lot of illegal aliens in Georgia. There already were, you know, a few years ago, more so than there were in the state of Arizona, which is a border state. I mean, this is a problem. Every state's a border state. You see all these memes that are like, oh, why why does the, the person that lives in this county in Michigan happen to care about the border? It's because the border is every single state now because of how many illegal aliens have poured in. They're not just staying in Texas. They're going all over the place. You see cases like the Ruby Garcia case in Michigan, the Lake and Riley case in Georgia. It is a massive problem. You have criminal gangs pouring over, and you have people that the Biden administration could deport, but they're not going to deport them because they're playing the long game. They care about power. They care about votes. And that's really all it comes down to. So you look at this, though, because Biden knows he has nothing to run on. He cannot run on the economy to save his life. He runs from it. Bidenomics doesn't even mention it anymore because it got laughed at. doesn't matter what arbitrary numbers he wants to point to say. The American people don't believe it based off of vibes. And it's obvious because they can't afford to live. They can't afford to buy a house. It's a big mess. Biden saying the economy is getting better just makes him seem out of touch with the average voter. Then Biden can't run on immigration. His pitch is basically, oh, we're going to blame the Republicans for something that I did exclusively via executive action, which was basically opening up the border, rescinding Title 42, remain in Mexico, you name it. He's acting very woke. He's loaded his White House with a lot of these woke staffers. Now he's basically declaring transgender visibility day on Easter, insulting many Christians across the nation. Every single step his campaign is taking is just bizarre and it's very poorly run and it's desperation. And now the latest hope is abortion because Donald Trump basically came out with a position that they somehow can't really spin negatively and they're freaking out about it. So now they're trying to blame Trump for state bans because Trump got rid of Roe v. Wade, which is the constitutionally sound thing to do. But Biden making that a big deal is not moving the needle whatsoever. You look at 2022, Roe v. Wade just went out the door. Dobbs v. Jackson became the law of the land. Abortion was the most important issue for 10% to 27% of the electorate nationally, depending on which exit poll that you use. And now you're looking at the importance of the issue. It's now down to 7% at most in the polls that currently sit in the aggregate. Biden is trying to make this a big issue because he thinks it's the only issue he can run on. But then Donald Trump has neutralized it. He said, I support leaving it up to the states. I support exceptions. I oppose late-term abortion, which is basically common sense. And that's something that the Biden campaign is really going to struggle trying to tie Trump to because it's just not going to stick. It's going to stick among partisan Democrats who were going to turn out and vote for Joe Biden anyways. It's not going to stick among the average undecided swing voter in Michigan. They don't exactly care if somebody in the state of Mississippi has to drive an extra couple hours to abort their child. That's basically not how this works. In Michigan in 2022 was a little bit different because you had abortion on the ballot. You definitely had Tudor Dixon as the nominee who happened to basically come out in favor of no exceptions, ban it entirely, which is a very unpopular position, whether you like it or not, and she didn't do so well. 
The CNN exit polls are pretty iffy, but even in the CNN exit poll, it showed that like 50% of voters in Michigan viewed abortion as their number one issue, and those voters heavily broke for Gretchen Whitmer. So at the end of the day, that's kind of what it comes down to. I don't think this is going to move the needle as much as some people think. I really don't. I mean, they're definitely running a campaign that's basically on democracy and abortion, something that Biden will probably never even be able to codify because he doesn't have enough votes for it. So there's that. It doesn't really seem as if it's going to move the needle. Donald Trump gaining in some recent polls as well. And this is basically all they really have. And it's not like this is going to be a cakewalk election regardless, because they will resort to many dirty tricks. We know that we've seen it in the past, but they have less of a mandate to now. They can't censor stories as easily now. They can't do everything they did in 2020 as easily in the here and now for 2024. So they're going to just be as unhinged as possible. But is that really going to make up the difference? Not necessarily. But what we need to focus on is turning out voters. If we are able to turn out voters, including some of these voters who may have never voted Republican before, that's a good thing, but also white working class voters in Michigan, Wisconsin, Pennsylvania. That's definitely a major, major focus as well. But still, Donald Trump gaining everywhere, it seems, it's a good sign. And Biden doesn't have anything to run on this election. That's why he's resorting to just sounding like a lunatic on the issue of abortion, but he's not going to be able to change the law anyways. Donald Trump's saying he's going to leave it up to the states. It's a neutralized issue. It is. Definitely, maybe in Arizona, we could talk about that. Depending on what happens to the recent court ruling, it seems like the legislature is going to work to overturn that, but we really have yet to see. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Like this video down below, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. The links are all in the description down below, and I will see you guys in the next one. Red Eagle, out.